We are nearing the end of the Derek Jeter documentary, The Captain. Tonight was episodes five and six. These episodes focused on all the way from the 2004 ALCS all the way to the beginning of the 2014 season when Jeter announced his retirement. I will say this, the 2004 ALCS section of this documentary may have been the most emotional I got throughout this entire piece because I got sad having to watch the Yankees blow that 3-0 lead again. And they did such a great job. They did an absolutely terrific job. The guy's name, Randy Wilkins, um, did such an amazing job of just making me remember that terrible feeling I had watching the Yankees blow that lead. And it was so well done, uh, so beautifully done there. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if any Yankee fan wanted to see it again, but it was important for that part of the documentary how the Yankees just terribly in game four, the Ortiz walk off in game four and five, showing bloody sock in game six and then just getting blown out of the building in game seven. They talked about, uh, the rest of the documentary focused on um, the two parts media, how Jeter would not give anything to anyone, how he felt like, you know, I don't, want to get, I don't want to cause any more distractions. That was basically his mindset with it. And then you have some guys in the media is like, I understand that, but like, we also need quotes here. Uh, we focused again on the Jeter-A-Rod relationship, which just continues to have, uh, all these nuggets about the Jeter-A-Rod stuff is just terrific. It's just fantastic. Um, and yeah, just focusing on the infamous uh, ball where the two guys, uh, where they both go for it and Jeter just stares at him as A-Rod drops the ball. Um, just terrific. And those two, just the hatred, at least from Jeter's side, is just palpable. Um, they addressed the infamous gift basket story, which Jeter denied. I don't know if I 100% believe it. I, I guess I believe Jeter, but you know, I'll, I'll never know for sure. But it, it's just funny to, to people to talk about, to think about there. Um, they had a good section on racism about how you know Jeter talked about you know why he didn't, why they didn't talk about racial issues um, in the in the Yankees clubhouse and why he didn't uh, mention any of it. Um, why it wasn't brought up to him, but he was talking about the growing up, you know, as a biracial and issues like that. The most important part of the documentary uh, for me, um, or the, the funniest part, so uh, reporter Wallace Matthews refers to Derek Jeter as colorless. And they immediately cut to the rest of Jeter's family all roasting this guy for saying, how dare you call Jeter colorless? Like, like, what kind of asinine response is that? And they all, him, his sister, his dad, his mom, just roast the guy. That was absolutely hilarious. By the way, Wallace Matthews has uh, made his Twitter account private today. Because I think he realized that was a terrible, I don't know why, God, why would you say that? In 2022, you'd go in front of a documentary and just say that. Um, and uh, they also, after that, which I thought was, again, was the funniest part, just of how here's somebody saying it and here's everybody just roasting the guy for saying it. I can't imagine, I cannot believe this guy was on tape saying, oh yeah, Derek Jeter's colorless. Oh, gosh. Um, and then after that, they focused on Jeter's, the struggle that he had at defense um, throughout the year, at least I was glad it mentioned, um, because, you know, Jeter, not the greatest, best defender of all time. I think it's fair to say. Then we go to episode six. They mentioned the, the goodbye to the Yankee Stadium. They talk about you know how great that stadium was, and they bring Joe Jeter's speech from that. They bring up 2009, how they get CC. They're all excited about opening the new stadium. A Rod gets steroids. Uh, a Rod tests positive for steroids, and Jeter's response to that when he's asked about it is just another. It was just another distraction. That's what he hated about it. It was just another distraction. Uh, they then focus on the 09 season, the last Yankees World Championship. And it was great seeing that part of the documentary. Just focus on that great year. Jeter having a nice comeback season. Um, all the walk-offs, they talk about CC, how important he was to that uh, uh, the, uh, that team, and then of course the Yankees win that title. Uh, they go to, head to 2010 where Jeter's contract negotiations become public and how Jeter hated that. And Jeter talked about, with, um, mentioned how he asked Cashman, who do you think is better than me? And Cashman just answered Hanley Ramirez and Troy Tulowitzki. That's pretty harsh from Jeter to hear. Um, yet again, more insight into Jeter, the kind of person um, that, he, that he was there. Um, but of course, the Yankees signed. It, it, that documentary made it seem like the Yankees were actually pretty close to just moving on from Jeter, but thank God that didn't happen. Also, wanted to bring up the A Rod stuff. They're talking about how there's reporters saying that Jeter need to warm up to A Rod, to you know, tell A Rod, hey, you know, to show him, embrace him more publicly. And Jeter's response when they asked him about it is like, what the hell do you want me to do? <laughs> so again, just showing the tension those two had, um, and how Jeter just sometimes Jeter admitted like he could have been a better teammate, he could have been gone out with his teammates more, but he just didn't want to. Um, but that was one issue where I don't know if it would have been, I mean, I guess it would have been better for the Yankees if Jeter and A-Rod got along, but Jeter just didn't want to do it. Um, they talked about the Jeter 3000th hit game, um, him going five for five uh, in that, which I still remember just being one of the great experiences of our time. We finally get to see Hannah Jeter, which by the way, Derek Jeter, fantastic job out of you. I mean, he dated a lot of pretty women, but to end up with Hannah Jeter as a wife, mwah, just fantastic, sir. Well done. She shared uh, the story how they met. It was very cute. Also shared some embarrassing stories about um, him uh, just falling on his scooter when he's, his ankle uh, was hurt, which that then cuts to his comeback season in 2012. Thinking, oh, wow, things are going great here. 
and then the injury. And I've never, I remember never feeling more hopeless. And I've never seen a team die like when the Yankees died after Jeter got hurt. And you could just tell just how. But, you know, Jeter was hurt before that, but Jeter kept playing because that was Jeter. Jeter never was the kind of guy who was just like, if, if I'm playing, I'm playing, all right? Then I'm not hurt. So, and then it focuses on Jeter finally retiring, Jeter realizing that when it, when it feels like it became a job, that's when he quits. And so that's when he retired. Um, there was also one last great story how it ended about how Buster only said that he felt like, as he's talking about the beginning of 2014 season, he feels like the Yankees should have moved Jeter down in the lineup. And Jeter's response to that, again, is just, like, again, he just curses out Buster only. This has been a great documentary. It's not Jordan level, but it's pretty fun about Jeter's level of just people calling him out, people criticizing him, and him being like, what the F, man? Like, it's just, Jeter's response to that are just hilarious. So um, I've really grown to like Jeter even more here. Just, uh, he had this very interesting side that I wish we had seen in public, but he didn't want to show it. So disappointing there, but I'm glad we're seeing it now. Overall, again, a great two episodes here. This documentary just felt like it's better and better. Just again, the stories that it tells, the side of Jeter that it shows, all the different checkpoints it, te- uh, it uh, goes through of, of the Yankees. Very interesting, and a lot of great stuff in here, and uh, totally recommend it to again, anyone who isn't a Yankee fan. And I cannot wait for this final episode tomorrow, uh, or next week. Great job, really enjoyed so many parts of it, and yeah, the Wally Matthews colorless quote and the Jeter's family's response, that's what I'm going to be taking away the most from this, and also just how gorgeous Andrew Davis looks. That's it for now, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time for the episode, uh, recap of the final episode. Take care and God bless.